and they they said if you'll just have a seat and then they, I get set down and I say Mr. Martin and I okay so I go back there you know and they do some stuff and this little girl comes in and says we need you to come to another room uh, put on this gown and we're gonna have a doctor talk to you and I'm still feeling normal <coughs> well up here anyway and this 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 doctor comes in and she didn't look nice or friendly or nothing and she <laughs> said Mr. Martin we have determined by these tests that you've been having heart attacks and you're still having them and uh, we're going to put you in a room tonight and observe you because if you have a big one we need to be on the spot and take care of you tomorrow we'll play stents and I said I didn't come in here for that I came in here for industrial strength and digestion medicine and she said did you come in here to be funny or did you come in here to be help and I thought okay On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus, and today I'm so excited to welcome my guest, Earl Ray Martin. How are you, sir? I'm just wonderful. How are you doing? I How am you? wonderful. There go you ahead. go. Go. No, you go right ahead. Well, we were just talking before we get started, and we both have deep West Texas roots, and yeah. so we're very connected, <laughs> and I'm sure, who knows, it may even be related somehow. <laughs> uh, we could be. I'm sure we are. <laughs> with, the, with, the, with those common roots, I'm, I'm curious. All yes. right, sir. Well, tell us a little bit about your story. I think this goes back to what year? It was May 19th. Uh, to 19 May 2015 <laughs> Lord I was getting young then yeah we had been we had my youngest son and I had been camping a lot well when he went to college it kind of messed stuff up but at the end of his third year um, we we made long-term plans to go camping uh, before his senior year started he was studying to be a nurse uh, at Stephenville Texas at Tarleton uh, university or college whatever that was and um, so we met at mineral wells state park he had been there about i don't know maybe an hour and a half before i could arrive and had been running and i'm thinking <laughs> why are you running man it's hot and humid here and he's, oh yeah i run all the time so anyway we start to unload for this big all-man camping trip you know it's just the guys it's gonna be we're gonna light a fire and burn things and eat them and we're going to smell like smoke after the you know three or four day trip actually it's four days and uh so i'm unloading i had been saving up for a long time i used to be a butcher in a local market back a long time ago when i had brown hair and uh <laughs> you know i was pretty pretty educated on the cuts of meat and things like that so i'm bringing all of this stuff that i had been collecting and freezing i'm talking the whole range of what you do over a campfire. And I'm noticing he's starting to unload stuff out of his car. A case of bananas? And what is that white thing? He said, it's a rice maker. I said, what do you use it for? You know, to make rice. But why are you bringing that? He says, well, I brought beans and rice and I got a whole case of bananas here and some other stuff. I'm contributing to the food we're gonna eat. And I said, did they make you a vegan when you're at that college? And he said, no. He said, Dad, I'm a starving college student, and I did some research. Said, what? And he said, I researched how to get the biggest nutrition for the lowest cost because I'm hungry and I love to eat. And he said, I found this guy online named John McDougal. And the first thing I thought was, it sounds like a drunk Irishman. <laughs> Since then, I have found out that major portion of my DNA comes from Ireland. So, yay to Irishman, drunk or not. So, anyhow, we, we have this camping trip, and he's making beans and rice. He's telling these stories about, you know, he goes and he buys a case of bananas, and I said, don't, don't they get overripe? He said, I just eat them. I said, this McDougal guy really got you. So, anyway, that's May 2015. A few months down the line on October 1st, same year 2015 i'm in bed i'm about 15 minutes finally asleep and i wake up and i i've got this crick in my back or something ain't right. i think that something i ate for supper didn't set well 
and I just, I just hate to reverse gears. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I just fight that. I fight that till, till it's not a problem anymore. So about two o'clock in the morning, my wife says, why are you back up again? What's the matter? I said, I got a backache. She said, I'm calling an ambulance. And I said, no, I don't want to call an ambulance. You know? So she said, well, you either do something about it or, or I'm calling it. Cause I can't sleep with you up and down and all this pain and moaning and groaning. Mm. So, you know, I mess around with it. I try to do something with it. And finally, I just, I just go to sleep. So about 7.30, I'm supposed to be at work at 8. I wake up and I just feel like somebody hit me with a train. Man, I felt awful. But I get up, go to work anyway. My cousin, who I worked with at my brother's Napa store in Lubbock, Texas, he owns both of them. Uh, <laughs> we go and we load car batteries. And they're pretty heavy. We load, I think it was 28 of them in the back of his pickup, take them to the warehouse and unload them, put them on a pallet, wrap them. Well, it's time for lunch. And, you know, and I try to do my share and I'm still hurting. I'm not feeling good. So we're sitting there and I was, I was eating some, some lunch and just didn't feel good. And the pain was kind of getting worse. So I get through there. Get in my pickup and I drive 95 miles out to the White River Lake almost and deliver some car parts for the Spur Co-op and the guy picks them up and so I go then to Post Texas and deliver my last deal of the day and then I go home. About 4.30 man I'm just I'm feeling bad and I'm laying in the chair and thinking I wish my wife would get here and when she does she looks at me and she said I cannot believe you're still here and didn't go to the doctor. And I said, we're going now if you will drive. And she said, you look about as gray as I can imagine anything. You look awful. So we get in her car and we go to this 24-hour clinic because I think, you know, 75, 80 bucks, I'm out of here. All I needed, I thought, was some industrial strength indigestion stuff, mm. okay? And they looked at me and they said, Mr. Martin, we either need you to let us call an ambulance or we need you to go immediately to an ER of your choice because we think you're having a heart attack and we cannot treat you. And I thought, whatever. So we go to the ER at, at University. UMC. Yeah, yeah, UMC. And I mean, there were people everywhere. And I thought, we'll be here so late. And it's gonna be past my bedtime before I get home. And they, they said, if you'll just have a seat. And then I get sat down. They said, Mr. Martin. And I, okay. So I go back there, you know, and they do some stuff. And this little girl comes in and says, we need you to come to another room, uh, put on this gown, and we're going to have a doctor talk to you. And I'm still feeling normal. <coughs> well, <laughs> up here. Anyway. And this, this, this doctor comes in, and she didn't look nice or friendly or nothing. And she said, Mr. Martin. We have determined by these tests that you've been having heart attacks and you're still having them. And uh, we're going to put you in a room tonight and observe you because if you have a big one, we need to be on the spot and take care of you. Tomorrow we'll play stents. And I said, I didn't come in here for that. I came in here for industrial strength and digestion medicine. And she said, did you come in here to be funny or did you come in here to be help? And I thought, okay. So who was your doctor? I didn't have one. Oh, no, who was that doctor? Was that a cardiologist? Who was that doctor? Uh-huh. I never saw her again, thank goodness. Oh, okay. She wasn't nice to me. And, <laughs> and I signed the papers, and I'm sitting there, and I look at my wife, Betty, and I said, well, goodness gracious. I probably said something else, but this is G-rated. So anyway, we go to the room, and, you know, they, they wake me up at 7 o'clock the next morning. I'm being rolled in this room, and they're this is a real friendly group of people that I d knew were going to put a stent in me. I didn't know what that was all about. I, you know, I just didn't want to pass out when they started cutting and giving me shots because that's generally what I do. I just don't like needles. And <laughs> fortunately enough, I didn't feel anything. And, um, the guy who actually was appreciating my humor and sharing some of his said back to me, Oh, we got a problem. And I said, what? And he said to the girls, you know, the associates next to him, he said, sew him up and send him back to the room. 95% blocked. Can't do anything. Well, okay. So go back to the room. Then it got serious, Lori. Yeah. There was this nurse came in with a trainee. <clears throat> and she said, now this really tall nurse trainee is going to do a handstand on where we did an incision in your loins. 
and press down for at least 30 minutes because we have to keep that from blood clotting or else you could die from a blood clot. I said, uh, I work for Napa Auto Parts. They've got some really good super glue. Can't you use that? And she said, up. And so, bam, 30 minutes of pretty bad pain. Finally, it was over. And here comes a cardiologist. He said, uh, well, we're going to do Monday morning a bypass. It could be triple, quadruple. We don't know till we get in. But the, uh, the, you know, the thing that they saw when they were trying to place the stent was 95% blocked. It said, we figure the other ones are equal. So here I go. I sign papers and I think, well, he also told me, uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you that part because it's not happy. But anyway, apparently the surgery, and I don't want to disrespect those, those, those physicians, the people performed their duties. Mm -hmm. apparently above normal, above level, uh, way above normal, okay? Because it seems that my bypass, my triple bypass went as best as could be expected. So I praise them for their mechanical abilities and apparently all their facilities and everything were just top shelf or more. Mm -hmm. So bless them for that. I do have some issues though, because anyway, um, the advice and the counsel and, you know, all the other stuff that went along with it mm -hmm. that I later found out is another interview, Dr. <laughs> Marcus, <clears throat> another interview. But I didn't let my family know until late Sunday night that um, I was scheduled for a triple bypass because I didn't want to bother them. And plus, I began to understand that my lifestyle was the reason I was there. I didn't know, but just a tiny bit of it. But anyway, I told them Sunday night, I said, don't be coming up here too far. I mean, one of the kids lived in Puerto Rico at the time. One of the kids lived, uh, well, actually, the, my oldest child and my youngest were living in a suburb of Seattle. And mm. uh, <clears throat> no, he was still at school. But anyway, he ended up in Seattle. Um, the surgery went well. I found out the next morning after... I woke up and they said, okay, now you, you need to go over to the little boy's room and come back to bed. And everything went well until it was time to lay back down in the bed. And, and I am so sorry, but I found out I could curse a sailor into mm. embarrassment. That hurt so bad. Mm. And I didn't want to look at all these holes and tubes and everything they had put inside of me. Um, to be honest, I was getting to be a little bit embarrassed that I had done this to myself. So I went home, that was on Sunday, Monday afternoon, the 5th of October, 2015, that the surgery occurred. They sent me home Friday morning, um, you know, just a few days later. I began to watch some of those drunk Irishman's movies mm -hmm. and found out that Dr. McDougall probably never drank a drop of alcohol in his life. Mm -hmm. Although McDougall, I'm just assuming he's Irish. He's a fighter though. And I kind of like that Henri Detroit street kind of guy attitude that he has. I think he's getting more of that in these days that we're living now. But um, I began to see some of the things he was saying. I thought, man, I should have listened to this back in eight, uh, May when mm -hmm. I first heard his name from my son, who's eating beans and rice and potatoes and bananas. You know, I thought, I wonder if I could have skipped this heart attack thing and if I could have maybe skipped the bypass and, ah, but it's a bridge under the water. Here I am. I've got the eight inch scar on my chest. So I call my son and I say, well, you know, we text back and forth and um, I've been into this John McDougall. He said, hey, hey, have you got, have you got Netflix? He said, you need to watch Forks Over Knives. Okay. <laughs> and when I watched that, it was all over. It was all over. Plant-based. I was going to go plant-based because I didn't want to know the pain and the embarrassment and the, 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 the emotion of that, that bypass and all the things that went along with it. I didn't want to do that again. Mm. And um, my son, I think he was uh, kind of surprised that I would get into it. it it'll be It'll be five years this October 5th that the surgery occurred. And um, it's just in the last few days that I have been challenged to be more plant food based, uh, you know, whole food plant based, uh, 
more dedicated to the to the purpose and who would have thought you know that crazy ray i mean he's so nuts now how can he get more than he has been well you ain't seen <laughs> nothing yet i i just i've i've been out and planting kale today and 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 you know some 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 other things that i can grow myself and eat you know and um, i'm excited yeah. about it so tell me how much weight did you lose i lost a total of 82 pounds at um two and a half years now now within the couple of weeks maybe three or four weeks after the surgery i went to therapy so i rode their treadmills and did their little pushy things and they monitored my heart and my insurance ran out and i found it was 350 dollars a visit and i said love you guys see you no more wow. so i left you know and didn't go back to that and i well one of my clients that i delivered parts to on the day i had the heart attack he said i mean i've got a really high priced rowing bike in there he said take that home so my wife betty had a treadmill that she'd just about worn worn out and i finished wearing it out ended up buying me a brand new one at the uh, sam's supply you know and um for a couple of weeks i was pretty faithful but then when it started getting warm and I couldn't exercise without sweating like a crazy kid in PE back in high school, you know, I thought, I don't like this, but I never stopped improving my, my, my food intake of whole food, plant-based, no oil, no salt, no sugar added to any of it. And, um, I was kind of happy to see the weight coming off. I was 240 something pounds. And, um, you know, when I, two and a half years later, when I got down 76 pounds, I, I felt like I had to do something. So that old treadmill that I, well, that, that new treadmill that I had bought and used a few times and then quit was set up in here in the, in the bedroom. And I thought, I'm gonna start doing that. Well, one day I ran eight miles on that treadmill. And I was loving it. And I'm thinking, man, this is pretty cool. Well, then one Wednesday morning, my wife came in just before I left for work. And she said, there's a 5K going on in Glen Rose, which is about 10 miles south of us. She said, I didn't know if you'd want to enter in that or not. And I said, well, I think I'd love to. That's a, that's a race, right? And she said, yeah. I said, okay. So I'm, I've got to go to work. So we're having a morning meeting and I'm thinking, 5k and i start getting my phone out. grandpa still got some game you know i'd never done this on phone before so <laughs> i entered and paid for my race before the morning meeting at work and they didn't even know i was paying attention but uh boy you know here it is wednesday this coming saturday uh march 22nd back then 2017 i believe it was or close to it maybe it was 2000 it was 2018 I'm going to go run in a 5K. And I said, Betty, how long is 5K? And she said, well, I'm not real sure. So I got in the car and drove around the block here, well, the neighborhood until I got 3.1 miles on the speedometer. And I thought, I've only got an hour to do that before the cutoff time. And I'm not going to come in after I cut off because I'm too proud. So I, I got out and I tried real hard, you know. And this is the first time I've run outside, Dr. Lord. I didn't want to run outside because I was ashamed of an old fat man running. I didn't want to be seen by anybody. Okay. Uh -huh. I'd shut the door in the bedroom when I was on the treadmill because I didn't want anybody seeing a 72 pound or 76 pound less weight old man running. I, that's 70 something pounds. Okay. So anyway, I got out that afternoon, ran it. I did it in 58 minutes. I think I thought, yeah, I can do this so man we went and bought me new clothes down at walmart and i had some <laughs> shoes that'd be all right i thought and i'll go out there and you know bang here we go the race is going and man i thought man i hadn't felt like this since 1972 when we played the slayton tigers for the last high school football game you know man, i think i like this you know and i'm just going along there and I, I was so excited. I never even turned on my running music. I was just running, running the wind was blowing in my, my hat, my hair. I had a ponytail almost down to my waist that day. And, and for a number of years after I finished that race in 42 minutes, I thought, holy wow. moly, I may be the next mild trendsetter for a 70 something year old or 60 something year old man. <laughs> and then they called my name said, third place ray martin from granbury and i thought 
I got a medal. So I'm so proud, you know, and I'm taking pictures and, you know, all this Aww. stuff. I was so happy. Then I got home and looked at the readout. and There was only three people in my age group. That's so no okay. wonder I got third place. But you know what? I didn't care. That's the, that, that, that medal's still on display. I've still got Aww. the T-shirt and everything. So I was excited. And, um, you know, I just, I started running after that, but I only lost down to eight, from 76 to 82 pounds after that when I really thought, you know, I'd gone down to like 145 or something. I, I'm, I'm not worried about how much I weigh. I just wanted to be healthy and not have another heart attack. And the weight just came off naturally. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm really sexy now being at this weight, but, you know, I have to live with that problem. But, you know, my wife likes it, so we're in good shape. So I just, I found out the more I ran, the hungrier I was. My appetite just went. You know, as much as I started doing exercise and running and stuff, the more my hunger grew in mm -hmm. proportion. And, you know, I'll come home and I, I try to post pictures on Facebook of my breakfast a lot because it's different. You know, I eat a lot of kale for breakfast and I'll chop it up fresh. I went through a stand here a few months ago of, of steaming it, gently steaming it, I would say. Um, but yeah, I just, man, you put a banana and uh, some blueberries and, and something and you can just 90 90 percent of it can be fresh kale and i'll eat that i'll eat it all day long man i love that stuff but i used to be a butcher okay right. i mean i was that tough guy i was the tough guy that was taking my boy camping and we were going to burn food over the fire and we were going to be men maybe even like a little neanderthal or something <laughs> be the tough man well man that picture, that picture of me in the hospital, my wife just hates cameras. She hates pictures. She hates everything to do with photography. But for some reason, she took five shots of me when they rolled me back in out of recovery. And I'm laying there with that big tube down and all the tubes out of my chest and everything. I'm out like a light, thank goodness. She took a picture of me. She took five pictures of panorama, more or less. And I'm so grateful she took that because, man, I looked awful. My face yeah. was all swollen. You know, I was 240 pounds plus all that stuff they gave me for the surgery. I, I'm wearing pants now I couldn't have wore back in 1967 when I was in the eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. My goodness. It's pretty skinny. So what did your cardiologist say? when you told them that you were going to go on a whole food plant-based diet or that you wanted to reverse your heart disease or attempt to control yeah. it that way. Okay. I, I, he, he, he told me the day, the week of the surgery, you know, he said, you're going to come back in three months. Here's, I think it was two different types of blood pressure medications, uh, a statin drug, Lipitor and um, baby aspirin, and, and a couple of other things that finally kind of tapered off in a little bit. I got a picture of me standing there the first morning back at home, and I'm going through this collection of meds, you know, and I'm thinking, I don't like this. But I was wearing my Superman cape, and it, it doesn't matter then, so it made it okay. I go back in three months, okay? I had done been McDougalized, and uh, I, had, I had listened to the book, uh, The China Study by T. Colin mm -hmm. Campbell, and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's whole food plant-based for this guy. No more dairy, no more meat, no more nothing. You know, it's just plants and from here out. So I was so proud. I walked into that cardiologist office at the three-month checkout. And he was about as happy. as He never was a real happy guy but or friendly either. But, you know, he was the same character. I mean, and apparently he was a good one because the surgery seemed to have gone well. And he and the surgeon, I'm, whatever they did together, it must have worked out great. And I want to thank them for their diligence. I don't thank him for what he told me. I'm sitting there and I'm all prepping. Now look at them blood tests, you know. Look at those results. Man, I Googled every bit of that and it's in good shape. Now, I didn't tell him I Googled it, but I had. I knew what most of that stuff was talking about by then. Mm -hmm. I expected to be taken off at least half the medication and the rest of it cut in half. Mm -hmm. but okay. Numbers look okay. We're going to double your Lipitor. We're going to double your blood pressure medication. And, um, oh, well, well, wait a minute. Well, my numbers are fantastic. He said, doesn't matter. He said, you're a smoker. I said, wait a minute. I hadn't smoked two packs a day since 2008. 
He said, you'll always be a smoker. I can see it. All I got to do is look at your test results and I can see you're a smoker. You'll always be a smoker. And you're always going to have heart disease. Mm. Well, now, wait a minute. I don't eat, and I told him this word for word, I don't eat anything except plants and vegetables and, and, and potatoes. And I don't fry anything. I don't use oil. I don't add salt. I don't add sugar to anything. He laughed at me. He mm. laughed at me, Dr. Laurie. Mm. And it was like, you know, I've had girls kick me in the stomach it could do better than that, but that hurt. I didn't like mm. it. It felt bad. Of course, I know some girls could probably take my head off right now because, you know, they're, they're pretty tough. <laughs> well, so was he. I, he was mean. Mm. And I said, no, wait a minute. I said, if I quit eating these things that cause the heart attacks, I won't have any more. And he laughed at me again, second time. He said, we don't know what causes heart attacks. And you can't do anything to keep it from happening again. It's probably just your genetics. You can thank your parents or your grandparents. Mm. So he doubles the meds. Wow. I walked out there and never saw him again. Never, I never answered another inquiry from the office, nothing. Within two weeks, I was, and this is not wise. Ask Dr. Lori, she knows. I took myself off my medicine. I didn't even Google how to do it. I just oh was mad and I did it. Well, yeah, my kid's a nurse up in the, uh, in Washington state by then. It doesn't that wisdom come down by osmosis. No, no, no. no. I knew no. you'd say that, but see, you're not laughing at me. You're mm -hmm. laughing with me. Mm -hmm. So I quit. And you know, one of the reasons I quit was my son had called me. He said, he called me up. I'm out in the middle of nowhere going to, uh, uh, Jayton, Texas. Now that's the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Good people though. Good people. And he said, dad, he said, are you still eating grapes? I said, yeah, about six or eight a day. So he said, stop. I said, why? McDougal likes them. And he said, grapefruit, grapefruit will counteract with your Lipitor and it could be deadly. So you need to get off the grapefruit. Okay. So I hung up, you know, and talked. I thought about it for a little bit and I thought, I think I'll just give up the Lipitor. Yeah, yeah. So actually that's when I started taking myself off my medication. Don't even use a baby aspirin anymore. I didn't go see another doctor. I, I was so angry. <laughs> my surgeon, my surgeon also told me, I said, how's everything look? in my goodbye visit with him. And he said, everything looks really, really good. You've done a great job in recovering. And I said, well, I guess you did a great job in the surgery. I appreciate that. I said, what do I do now? What do you mean? I said, well, what do I stop eating? What do I start eating? What do I do? And what do I stop doing? <laughs> he said, let me tell you something. He said, I eat two slices of bacon and two fried eggs every morning for breakfast. Hmm. He said, what I'd do if I was you, if you eat three slices of bacon and three eggs for breakfast, moderate it. Oh my God. Two eggs and two slices of bacon, cut down. You'll be a good boy. Oh my gosh. And I thought, really? So when he said bye, I didn't, you know, of course I told him, the last thing I told him was I don't ever want to see you again. I love you, but not, I don't ever want to see you again. Well then, you know. Well, that's, so first of all, let's, Let's unpack a little bit. First of all, I, we don't encourage people to wind this off of meds, especially if you've had a heart attack. I, I, I respect your story and your decisions. You're always final decisions up to the patient. But, <laughs> you You're know, correct. There, are, there are incidents just because you went to a whole food plant-based diet, you had 60 some odd years of damage to those yeah. arteries. And so that's I why it's, in, it's important. That doesn't happen overnight. And even years later, it could still be an issue. So do you still get your cholesterol and blood pressure checked and stuff? I didn't go back to a doctor until two years after that separation. Okay. And um, I, uh, I had, before the heart attack, lost the hearing in my right ear. So I had, I had hearing aids and driving six hours back to the local carrier to go to that audiologist was just out of the question. So I needed one here in town. And by then I was uh, 
on some insurance that I had to have. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, so the audiologist here in town said, if, if you'll get a doctor's permission that says, hey, the doctor says you need hearing aids, we can get you some, some hearing aids for about $25. And I said, okay. So I went to see a doctor. And uh, he's a general practitioner. Uh, I'd say 40, 45 years old, sweet man, sweet family. And when he walked in, I'm, <laughs> Not I got happy. my barriers up, you know. Mm-hmm. And I said, um, I'm not taking any meds. I'm not going to take any meds. And um, if you'll work with me, I'll, I'll keep coming back and seeing you. He said, I hear what you're saying. He said, I appreciate what you've been doing. He said, you know, according to your blood search here, it's pretty good. It looks pretty good. I mean, my blood pressure is like 105 over 50 sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And, uh, of course, I'd never had blood pressure problems. I'd never had diabetes. I'd never had heart problems. Or let's put it this way. I had heart problems. I just didn't have a heart attack until October 1st, 2015. So he said, but I want to watch you. And he said, I'm going to tell you what I am supposed to tell you. And I said, I appreciate that. And if you'll keep seeing me, I'll keep her coming and listening. So now I've seen him for three years. And the only thing he said last time was, you know, I'd have you on statin drugs no matter what mm-hmm. because you're a heart disease person. You have to be on statins. And I said, I appreciate that, but I am never taking another statin. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, the only thing I can see here is your vitamin D is a little bit low and your B12 is a little bit low, but they're still in the acceptable zones. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, I'll get more sunlight. and I guess I can go find some dirt and lick it. But he didn't like, you know, he, he didn't think that was as funny as it was. But anyway, I keep going back. And now that I'm 65, yay, and on Medicare, you know, I don't know what that's going to be. But he said that uh, his and my relationship will continue on. And I actually now am, I have to retract everything. I just said, I am taking some B12 supplements. As you um, should be. Yes. And everybody I read and listen to, uh, you know, all the V, ve- not vegan, but the whole food plant-based people, as well as the vegans. I listen to all of them. Um, you know, they're saying, hey, you got to get some B12. And I understand why, because the ground has no more left in it. And the feedlots have nothing but bad in them. And uh, any kind of... Well, no plant has B12. I'm sorry? No plant has B12 in it. So now that's you, true. So you so, need to take a supplement or fortified food. So I did, I did, um, I did go to the very few doctors that I listen to who are well known as whole food plant based folks. And, um, you know, I looked at what they suggested. And so that's the one I went with. Although I do realize that of the top four that I would trust and listen to, they all have a different, there's two or three different selections that they go with. So I understand mm-hmm. that we're individuals. And even though we're whole food plant-based warriors, um, mm-hmm. I believe my hero, Dr. McDougall, just said in a video quite 10 days ago, your whole food, actually, he said your starch of ore diet is not going to save you from this, this virus that's upon us. Mm-hmm. You've got to you've got to be smart. Wash your hands. Keep yourself protected, and you know don't go be out looking doorknobs. In in mm-hmm. essence, you know, be smart. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want to do. I want to be smart, but earning my trust is going to be a little bit uh, difficult at this point. <laughs> um, what was your last cholesterol, if you don't mind me asking? I'm sorry. What was your last total cholesterol? Do you recall? I I think it was a little bit higher than I wanted it to be. I don't remember. I, I can send you the copy of the page if you'd like. I can show you the trend. I've, cop- I've kept every, um, every report from mm-hmm. the day I went into the ER and then those that I got from that and everyone since then. It, it's, it's not, you know, what that's the miracle 70 zone or the. Your LDL. Yeah, the right. LDL. It's not at 70, but it's not much over 100. Um, I'm not okay. happy with that. 
Is um, that your total cholesterol or your LDL, your bad cholesterol? LDL. So LDL, just for people to understand your bad cholesterol, preferably actually even under 60, right around 58, is where you start seeing the research say you don't have heart attacks anymore. Um, the other thing would be your total cholesterol under 150. So a couple of things that might be interesting for you is, is um, the research on Brazil nuts. Um, and it, you know, there's a little bit of insert research, but I do have trusted cardiologists that also use this more than one, but two Brazil nuts a week. Okay. Okay. Cause at and, this time I'm trying to do four a month. Okay. I, I would do two I, a week. I love those things. I, I yes. could do two a week. You don't need more do than, that. than that, but um, that might be helping a little bit. And are you using ground flaxseed? Yes. Okay. Good I job. always grind it fresh and then <laughs> eat it with this as quickly as possible so that it doesn't evaporate. Absolutely. So those are those are the two couple things and see what happens. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So you know, each of each of us have our own decision, our own journey to make. But at least you're making those amazing healthy uh, changes to your diet will help. Now, does it mean that you're out of the woods 100? percent No. No. So. No. Yeah. I I understand that the food alone will not work. So in some people it can, but some we people don't know. it's just bam overnight. It's like no more problem. Um, <laughs> the exercise, you know, I just help. never, I've never done that. I know it helps and mm -hmm. I'm not. And, and every time I tell people that I cut myself off medications two weeks later, um, you know, they may look back at me someday. Well, that guy was just nuts. Well, it may <laughs> prove out to be, but that's where I'm at right now. I feel, I feel great. I'm, I'm yep. doing things I've never done before. Which is wonderful. Uh, but I just want to always be caution. So these are wonderful stories. You're feeling good. You're exercising. You're running hundreds of miles a, a year, which is fantastic. So, but that shows the power of plants, right? So yes. it'd be interesting to see, um, not that I'd want you to go do this, but to see <laughs> how clogged up those new arteries that they made for you are. And if there was are, any regression in the others. Are you familiar with the, what is that, that, that quick calcium little thing? Score? Calcium, they like shoot a, you in that machine and come yeah. back out. Yeah. They do your calcium score. Yes. Your, did you get I got, one done? I got one of those and actually spoke with the, you know, by instant message with the doctor who had been suggesting them uh, online. And he said, Oh dude, he said, I'm sorry, you shouldn't have wasted your time and your money on that because you've already, you already know you've got, you know, mm -hmm. enough damage to give you a triple bypass and a mm -hmm. heart attack prior to that. He said, um, how long has it been? And at that time it was like at three years. And he said, you know, some of that plaque's not ever going to go away. Right. Some of it's not in your sympathetic passages, arteries and veins that the body will develop, you know, they're not lateral. Yeah, they're 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 you, open. Well, I mean, the, all it showed was the blockage on the mm, test. Just the big one, um, you know. And I'd be glad to share that with you too, so you can see it. It it kind of scared me, but then after I talked to that doctor, he said, "Yeah, that's that's probably all the arteries they bypassed." I thought, well, mm -hmm. shouldn't they they opened up? You know, I don't know. Anyway, it's been it's been over a year, and I'm thinking about. Wasting well, some more time and money to, to get another one and see what it says. It would be an interesting thing because you really don't know a trend until you have two, at least two data points, right? So right. is there a trend downward? Is it holding steady? So those would be some really interesting things to well, and consider. Well, here's, and here's the thing. The body produces the cholesterol that the body needs. Okay, well, years ago, back in 90, 93, I had a gallbladder removed mm. um where was i going to go with that i don't remember but anyway yeah. <clears throat> you know there was that there was that oh the damage to i mean the gallbladder is part of the the function of the liver mm. right i mean in in the synchronicity of it all right if i'm missing a gallbladder is that going to affect the function of the liver and isn't the, with the liver where most of the cholesterol is formed that the body needs to make cells and that so the the gallbladder would be more in the sense of it helps you absorb certain fats and things like that um but it can you know 
that's a long discussion to, to yeah it's a else. whole nother deal but see here's the my but, here here was where i was going if i may i'm not eating anyone else's cholesterol anymore right absolutely but there's some genetic factors involved right here so i've had 12 year old kids that have parents that had horrible genetic cholesterol that runs cholesterol in the 300s so there may be a gen genetic component to that as well so I mean, my mom's dad died at 46 of a heart attack. My real dad had his first one at 38. But my wow. cholesterol runs really low now because I'm plant-based. So I, I think I'm okay from the standpoint of, you know, cardiac disease. But well, you got to be careful. Yeah. And I do remember hearing the big, the big doctors in the whole food plant-based movement, the whole plant, the whole mm -hmm. whole food plant-based movement say, mm -hmm. If they have to, they will prescribe statins. Absolutely. But I, I, you know, I guarantee you this: <laughs> I'll never take another one. And unless, that is fine. That's your choice. Unless I trust the whole food plant-based doctor. Right. Absolutely. I would love for you to see Dr. Kim Williams. He's my friend up in. Well, up yeah. In I mean, my gosh. <laughs> Where in the world is he? I mean, he's nowhere near Granbury, Texas. So he's in Chicago. Know. Yes, very busy right now with all that's going on. But, oh my goodness! I imagine yeah. they are. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've I've chosen based upon a lot of habits of my sixty-something years of life that led me to where I was, and mm -hmm. I have made a huge amount of changes. Right. But, you know, it's like I just said at the beginning, I'm still finding things that just like, I say, wow, why didn't I know that four or five years ago? Sure. Well, why didn't I know that 60 something years ago? But nevertheless, in my story from the heart attack on, um, there's so much out there to learn. Mm -hmm. And so ex it's so exciting that, you know, you think, man, you know, that's, that's pretty interesting. Well, but I, you know, I hear these people, they, they get on whole food plant based. And I mean, it's like three months later, they say, man, eh, you know, my, my, my numbers are so low. The doctor mm -hmm. says, I can't believe this. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. well, why isn't that me? Mm -hmm. I, I guess because nobody's like me. Well, exactly. So everybody's different. Everybody has different risk factors, but you've made, you've made your choice. And I'm, I'm glad you have a doctor that's watching you and working with you. And that's fantastic. A lot of people don't have that luxury. The closest plant-based doctor I know of around here is about three hours away. Mm. And well, did you know we just launched our first plant-based telehealth? I launched our own practice. So I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about that. What? How, how, I'm down here <laughs> southwest of Fort Worth, Dr. Lori. You just go to our website, but we don't accept insurance. Unfortunately, right now we don't. Um, okay. So your doc may be your best choice still. But it's plantbasedtelehealth.com, and I'm licensed in Texas, of course, um, since I went to school there. And those that's where we want to actually cover the whole country by the end of the year. But I'm in 13 states right now. I have three more pending and a few more coming down the road. But... We have other docs that are joining us and we really want to cover all states, but you'll have access at least to consult with a plant-based doctor. If you have, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look right. at that. Yeah. I saw something about that the other day and I thought you got to be kidding, man. <laughs> and they'll be taking us out on trips on Starship Enterprise here before long. Like, oh yeah. I've been doing <laughs> that's one of the things that excites me, Dr. Lori is because I remember when my brothers got a Pong, game p-o-n-g video mm -hmm. thing you know that mm -hmm. just the yeah lines the next <laughs> the next year or two they got an atari and i'm thinking this yeah. is incredible and oh, yeah. uh you know the way things are developing now um i'm really excited about seeing what comes along in the future mm -hmm. and i i'd kind of like to be around to see it and the only way i'm gonna do that is take care of myself every day today so that uh i don't well, stay on that B12. There is some theoretical evidence that you may, if you get a low B12, they increase your risk for heart disease because of the increased homocysteine. So make sure you stay on top of your B12, okay? That's really okay. important. <laughs> All right. We'll keep a close eye on this one. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll All talk right. again. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, for anyone who is considering going to a whole food plant-based diet, I think your story is at least inspirational because you feel so good even after this amazing 
story of this heart attack and now you're running and, and in your older age, you know, you're, it sounds like the last half of your life will be much more active and energetic than you, the first part. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, definitely a lot more fun. And, uh, did your wife go, I, did your wife, I'm sorry, did your wife go on a plant-based diet? My wife will eat anything I fix. She will, uh, <laughs> she actually likes and loves some of it. Uh, some of my, some of my meals are, you know, they're not going to be something you'd put on a cookbook cover. Uh, <laughs> but I, I generally, if I make a disaster, I usually end up eating it because I hate to throw stuff away. And sure. it's really not bad. I mean, right. you're talking to a guy who was a butcher in the meat market for a long time. And right. if the meal didn't have bread and meat in it, it wasn't a meal. And right. Uh, right now, beans and rice and kale, I'm good to go. It's just, Absolutely. it's a big change. <laughs> So yeah, that's a, good, she, that's uh, a very good combo. <laughs> she is she is a wonderful support. She's my greatest fan, and uh, uh, she's always there to love me through my crazy times. <laughs> well, I'm glad you have someone supporting you, and and sounds like you're with your son, and your wife, and your doctor. So that's a very good thing, especially in the heart of Texas. <laughs> yeah, just outside of Cowtown. In fact, this is my uh, Cowtown marathon half marathon finisher jersey i earned in february nice. at the cowtown and when we get up to the top part and go east just a little bit and then go south you actually go down the streets where they still have cattle drives every day oh, wow. uh, for the tourists you know the longhorn cows yeah it's cowtown i mean that's where a lot of um, a lot of the beef industry is still I guess has its traditions and things. So, so yeah. did you, what's the furthest you've run so far? That would be Leadville half heavy half marathon last June. Oh, uh, wow. I think it was like fifteen point two, uh -huh. and uh, and then I walked all the way back up to our place we were staying, which was about nine thousand miles from the finish line. <laughs> Actually, it was only about five or six blocks. It felt like nine thousand miles. Wow. Yeah, that's the that's the most I've run at any one time. Now, although 2000, 2018 in October, on the third day anniversary, the third year anniversary of the day I had my triple bypass, I ran with the Missing Chins Run Club six man relay team Aww. in. Um, yeah, that they're just west of uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at Port Allen, uh, Louisiana, nice. and that total was was about ten and a half miles that morning, and about six and a half miles the next morning at two o'clock in the morning, over a railroad track. Yeah, it was awesome, man. It was, it was a part of a six man team. My youngest son had flown down from Washington to run with me, and uh, the other guys and. Um, that was the first time I had actually shook hands and embraced uh, the other brothers in the Mission Chins Run Club. And nice. uh, yeah, but then I got to meet a lot of the guys at uh, Leadville. I'm planning on going back this year if we get to have the. Uh, actually, uh, I signed up for the heavy half, my husband and I. So are you serious? Yeah. So oh, man, I, hope I literally I hope live to have it. I live two hours away, so, and I've been I, wanting to do it, but I've always had something come up where I couldn't do it or something. Oh, like bless your heart. Yeah. yeah but, we're ready to to take on. Well, great! I hope we I hope we get to shake hands. I hope we get to have it. I mean, with all that's going on, it's in June. Okay, now so. if we if if we can't shake hands, we'll. But I, I'm okay. Hoping, we'll just I'm, wave at you over there, okay? I'm hoping they at least still have it and things have settled yeah. down by then. So I do we'll too. If, but if not this year, next year. Absolutely, next okay. year. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> all right. All right, Mr. Earl, we had such a wonderful conversation. You and bet. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure. Let's do it again someday. Absolutely. Let's do it in Leadville, in person. Oh, there you go. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Some right. year. Some year we'll do it in Leadville in person. All, All right. right. Y'all have a great day. And uh, I'll probably go eat supper. And Sounds like a plan. All right. Post, go post stuff on Facebook. All right, bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.